separation. Can you hear anything here? Cheers had been heard since SpaceX said, stage separation, booster, shut up. All of us could not hide our emotions at the crucial moment. The stages separately beautifully, with Super Heavy tumbling downward and Starship climbing away from it. Yeah, all who considered a late change to the Starship Super Heavy stage of separation, at least the hot staging Techniki was an unexpected success, induced its first test time on SpaceX's beast. This major millstone promises to be a big bang for not only the company, but also the whole aerospace industry. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of Tech Map. November 18th will be an unforgettable day for space enthusiasts, given that SpaceX's Starship vehicle reached space on its second integrated test flight. The vehicle lifted off from SpaceX's Starbase test site at Boca Chica, Texas, at about 8.03 a.m. Eastern. Although its booster broke apart in its ascent at about 3 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff and its ship lost telemetry at an altitude of 148 kilometers, the success of the hot staging technique on Starship is enough to prove this test flight is a victory. We got the hot staging, the thing we really wanted to see, he said. It impressed. Lead engineer John Insprucker said on the SpaceX broadcast, why can we say confidently that? You should forget or should not forget that in June, Musk predicted that the probability of this next flight to get to orbit was at 60%, much higher than the last one. Of course, it depends on how well stage separation works. Now, what did we have? First, there was no obvious damage, no leak, or anything happening to the top of the booster. It proved that a six-foot-tall vented structure protected the booster from the danger of explosion while the ship burned all six engines. Then, Super Heavy burned successfully through to the main engine cutoff, which made the vehicle access its next step, hot stage separation. Unlike the first test in April when the vehicle could not reach this golden moment, thus, no separation between both occurred. Second, at the two minute and 45 second mark, Starship ignited its six engines and separated from the booster. As you can see, the whole process went on time as planned, smoothly and beautifully meanwhile, hearing the loud cheers of the crowd. Third, the ship then continued to ascent and finally reached an altitude of a little under half the altitude at which the International Space Station orbits the Earth, meaning cross the Karma Line to enter space. While its predecessor, Ship 24, only reached a peak altitude of about 39 kilometers before fiery disintegration. More importantly, it went more than 24,000 kilometers per hour close to orbital velocity. Therefore, it can be said with certainty that although the stage separation this time was not perfect, it at least made the spacecraft nearly reach orbit as expected. Anyway, good things take time. The hot staging technique is just equipped and tested on the most powerful rocket for the first time, so it needs to be upgraded and tested further. SpaceX said, with a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary. For people who have been living under a rock, hot staging refers to lighting the second stage engines while still connected to the first stage that is also still firing instead of shutting down the first stage and separating the two before starting the second stage as Falcon does. In the case of Starship during the separation, most of the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster shut down, but three still ran at 50% thrust, which provided enough thrust to push the vehicle apart. This is important because it potentially solves a number of problems for Starship, for example, reduced payload, no abort capability, which is required for crew safety, and no proven means of stage separation. Ironically, dry mass will slightly increase for hot staging because they have fitted a protective shield and exhaust ring to the booster. However, this is more than offset by the fact the second stage continues to accelerate during hot staging instead of losing velocity 
because the engines aren't operating. Overall, this more efficient approach should allow Starship to carry more payload to orbit despite its high dry mass. In the worst case, the booster is failing, hot staging could be used to separate the upper stage, allowing it to land downrange in the ocean. No doubt NASA will require an abort capability before they allow astronauts on board Starship. Hot staging is not a new idea, having been applied since last century on Russian rockets, so it can reassure the SpaceX team about its effectiveness. The win of SpaceX's IFT-02 fired the whole rocket industry up. Bill Nelson, NASA administrator, sent good wishes to the company. Congrats to the teams who made progress on today's flight test. Spaceflight is a bold adventure demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again. Together, NASA and SpaceX will return humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Adding onto the accolades was Jim Free, NASA's exploration head, who chimed in with, Each test represents a step closer to putting the first woman on the moon with the Artemis III Starship Human Landing System. Looking forward to seeing what can be learned from this test that moves us closer to the next milestone. CNSA Watcher, the agency that aims to provide a comprehensive and up-to-date view of the latest launches and missions of the China National Space Administration, tweeted on its X account after Starship's test. Another giant leap for mankind. Congratulations, SpaceX and humanity. So, what does the success of the hot staging technique mean? First of all, according to Elon Musk, this process can help increase orbital payload by up to 10% because it avoids the loss of thrust in traditional stage separation in which the lower stage is turned off first. The increase in payload capacity will unlock many future missions of the company. The most obvious is NASA's Artemis III mission for which SpaceX is preparing the Starship Lunar Lander to carry NASA astronauts into orbit. Since Starship selection by NASA for the first HLS award in 2021, exactly how many launches will be required has been a point of debate. Neither NASA nor SpaceX have given firm numbers. However, recently, the space agency has mentioned the high teens in the number of launches, with nearly 20 launches about concerns about boil-off or loss of cryogenic liquid propellants at the Starship depot in orbit. While Musk seems to be hoping for eight fueling runs and is more pessimistic, suggests 16+. plus. Once the hot staging technology works well to increase Starship's payload capacity, SpaceX may be able to somewhat escape the overload caused by Starship's high flight speed in Artemis III. In addition to Artemis, don't forget that the company also plans to launch Starlink on Starship. Its current operational rocket, Falcon 9, can only carry the mini-second version of Starlink, mainly due to its limited capacity. With Starship's significantly larger payload, we will see many large V-2 Starlinks deployed in the not-too-distant future. This is truly considered a giant leap toward Elon Musk's goal of providing global mobile phone services after 2023. In late September this year, SpaceX marked a milestone with the first Pentagon contract for StarShield, a military-specific version of Starlink. To date, there has not been much detail about this contract as well as this special variant, but we also believe that once Starship is fully operational and reaps the enormous advantages of the new approach of separation, this vehicle will be the right hand of the Space Force in delivering Starshield in bulk. This will also pave the way for long-term cooperation between the National Authority and the company, as well as other high-value buyers later. Last but not least, this successful launch will effectively greenlight the next steps on the journey of making Starship fully reusable and ultimately Mars colonization, such as testing the ship's ability to reignite its engines after re-entry, aiming for an electricity soft landing and testing the Mechazilla system and catching Super Heavy Booster. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you 
and we look forward to seeing you next time.